Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for December 19th, 2022. Well, my goodness, only six days till Christmas, and we have an interesting market condition here where we are oversold in the short term, and the hope of the Christmas rally seemed to seems to have faded dramatically so what does that mean for today well how about we settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the monday edition of the morning market prep video good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here i do truly appreciate it well doggone it we had kind of a rough end of the week last week um pushing these markets back pretty substantially if you'll notice here in the dow we pushed all the way back down to that tr downtrend break and found a little bit of price support and caught just a little bit of a bounce on Friday afternoon before the close. And we're getting just a maybe a little pre-market push to the upside here this morning um, as well. So taking a look at these charts, if we look right in here, that's kind of where we found that price support. We dipped on through that price level just a little bit and then bounce back up here at the day. So we found some price support right in there. And if you remember, it's one of those areas that we were talking about um, in the chart. So if, if the bulls can find inspiration today, where do we go? Well, I would suggest that there's a pretty good opportunity that we could pop up at least into here um, in that chart. And you'll notice these um, levels here um, showing up in the price action of that chart. Um, we've also got some additional levels out here uh, to the left that could help in that. Now, pushing back up there would be a substantial point move um, and a nice relief to the rally. But where do we go from there? Well, if we can push a little bit higher, then we might see a retest of this level right back here. All of these little bottom points here in the chart that's going to be a pretty big stretch, but it certainly is a possibility the way the market has been moving here lately. Now, if we were to get bears um, inspired today, and there's not a whole lot probably today to really inspire a lot of bears from this oversold condition, but you never know with the geopolitical um, issues cropping up over the weekend and things like that, um, anything is possible. But if we keep an eye on this area right in here, if we were to slip, maybe a slip down into here, it's where those bears might come into play. You can see these patterns right through here might give us that little bit of price support. And then um, also these areas out here that stretch us out across the chart. So watch that kind of carefully if those bears uh, find inspiration. Now, unfortunately, if we were to fail through that area, then um, it, this is going to get pretty ugly pretty fast. And you can see the next area of support down in here, it's probably all the way down in here. If we look real close, we've get, got a little bit of price support right through there, some right in there. So that would get pretty ugly if that were the case. Now, where we ended up finishing up here on uh, Friday, you'll notice that we came pretty darn close to giving that 50-day moving average a kiss. Um, didn't quite make it there and notice that we got our 200 day moving average down there so that does give us some nice price support we'll also want to consider that as we rally back up we've also created an interesting price resistance up here on our moving averages notices that we've got an 8 exponential here we've got the 500 day here we've got a 34 exponential right here so as we push back up to that level of price resistance that i marked in the chart uh, that could serve as an interesting level of price resistance and may actually give us an opportunity to pick up some short positions um, in the market. Let's take a look at our SPY, SPY. SPY also pretty disappointing for a lot of those bulls out there on Friday. We pushed down into this level. And if you remember, these are the levels that I kept pointing out in the chart um, 
if if the the Bulls were to get um, inspired, and boy, did they ever. So looking here on this chart, you know, where I showed on the Dow that we had broken through uh, or came back and tested the breakout of the downtrend. Well, unfortunately, what we have here is a failure at the downtrend. Um, kind of an ugly situation here overall. Um, we have broken that upside trend pretty substantially. So we're, we're a lot more bearish here on the SPY. Now, if we take a look at um, bullish inspiration, where could we go? Well, it's not that hard to see. We pump up in here, we could push right up into this level right here. Pretty pretty easily. It wouldn't, uh, wouldn't change a whole lot in the chart, but that possibility does exist. If, if those bulls um, have enough energy, well, we might be able to sneak right up into this area before we run in a, to a very substantial resistance area in the chart. So right now, that's about as far as I would want to um, want to speculate if we can push up there because that's a pretty strong level. If those bears find inspiration and continue to push to the downside, guys, unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of additional support under here. We got a little tiny level right here that you can see. And if we uh, break down through there, well, I'm suggesting we're going to come all the way down into this range here on the SPY which would be a pretty darn ugly move. Now, if we take a look at our moving averages in here on our charts, you can see um, on those averages, we've got, um, well, uh, kind of an ugly situation here where we broke through the 50 day moving average and any rally back up toward that area could actually bring those bears back in and create that down move. Now, my hope is we would rally a little bit more than that rally up into this area here and um, we're going to run into um, again that technical problem that 34 ema eight exponential moving down um, rally back up into there and i think that might be where we might be able to pick up the next short um, in the market if we look at our qqq well qqq is the weakest of the indexes and we really created some technical damage here on the QQQ. Breaking down this support level here in the chart, you will notice that there's not a whole lot left here to move down. We broke down through this level, we came down, we tested this level um, in the chart, we bounced off of that as you can see, um, almost kissed that um, right in that area and you can see if the bears were to find more inspiration here today um, there's not much help down here we got a little teeny tiny bit of price support right in here and after that I think we're coming back down toward these uh, lows of the year in the Nasdaq so watch that close now if those bulls can push today and find that inspiration here in the market well where could we go maybe up into here there's a little tiny bit of price resistance right in that area as you can see and if we can push even further right back there to test all of that downtrend or all of that break here in the chart now unfortunately um, we also have that problem here in the nasdaq where we failed at the downtrend so a uh, pretty pretty ugly technical situation here in the nasdaq um, we'll want to be keeping a pretty close eye on looking at our moving averages in this chart if we take a look well you can see we failed our 50-day moving average but not so much that you know we couldn't recover it unfortunately recovering it means we've got to attack a significant level of price resistance in the chart and I suspect any rally back up um, sets us up that for that opportunity of more downside here in uh, the market so watch that close now our IWM IWM was giving us these clues early it was giving us those clues because we failed along our downtrend uh, much earlier than we did here in the other indexes. Um, failed here and then what we ended up doing is we created a lower low by failing this price support, created a lower high and we have followed through with a lower low um, 
IWM is officially in a downtrend. Um, we've given up this upside trend here substantially, and we've got some issues here to deal with in the uh, Russell. If you take a look where we ended up Friday, we finished up right in here, noticing that we actually passed through this little price uh, support level right in here that we had talked about. And um, we're down here in a situation where there's a lot of price congestion, but no real clear price support area. If the bears were continue to to find inspiration to the downside, I would accept, suggest maybe down into this range would be the next level lower. And if that fails, well, we go back to the yearly lows. If the bulls continue with this uh, pre-market pump up here and continue with this push to the upside, um, I would say probably up in here is where I would look for that next resistance level in the chart. And if we were to able to push back up through there, which I think right now might be a bit of a stretch, then pushing up into here would be that next level of price resistance we'd be watching for. Once again, I think there is that reasonable possibility that as we move on down, if we rally back into these levels in here, we're going to be looking for that next opportunity short here on the Russell. may take a little bit of time, however, not quite as much time as, uh, or a little bit more time actually than maybe some of the other indexes. If we take a look at our VIX, interesting thing here in the VIX is that we really haven't shown a lot of panic, um, which does give us that little bit of hope that maybe we can get a little Santa Claus bump here in the market. If you take a look, we've got an inverted head and shoulders pattern showing here. Still holding up, um, we've kind of pushed up through this little resistance area here. Um, not a confident move up through that resistance area. We've broken that downtrend here in the chart and held it as support. So if those bears find inspiration, we'll start looking at some of these resistance levels up in here um, in the chart for us to potentially challenge and test if those bears continue to push. However, if the bulls find that inspiration, I would suggest a um, maybe a little resting consolidation or even a test back down into here might be possible. So watch that close here in uh, the VIX. Now let's take a look at our T2122. Our T2122 gives us our best hope of a bounce. We had pushed down here on Friday into a very bearish situation here in T2122. So we finally broke that upside hold up here um, on the bullish side with the hope of the Fed backing off and you know numbers being better, which they turned out not to be so much. And as you can see in here, um, that gives us that opportunity of that relief rally. But remember, those relief rallies in the uh, that we might receive could be pretty substantial, but we're going to run into some big levels of price resistance above. And the other problem that we're going to be dealing with here this week is the high probability that volumes will drop hard. And I think probably by Tuesday, Wednesday next week, we could, or this week, we could probably see volumes drop really, really hard because we have our uh, Christmas is on Sunday and you know there's going to be a lot of folks heading out for their Christmas holiday celebrations with family. Um, so I would expect volumes to decline very, very quickly. There is uh, some interesting things in the economic calendar that could keep that volume up toward the end of the week. But unfortunately, um, watch for a very light volume to start coming into play, which can make for a very dangerous market condition because we can whipsaw and move so quickly um, from institutional um, you know, algorithmic trading um, based on data that comes out. So you'll want to be really, really careful watching for those whipsaws and those big point moves that could be possible. Um, head fakes and things like that um, are also very likely. 
So let's take a look at our uh, T2108. Our T2108, well, those bears kind of had their way here um, on Friday, Thursday and Friday, as you can see. We really did finally break down below some of these support levels here in T2108, um, creating a little bit of stress or pressure maybe in the market. But that being said, there's still a lot of price congestion in here. Um, and being in an oversold condition in the short term, I would expect probably a bounce back. And maybe we come back up here and we test that level, these levels in here for price resistance in the chart. So keep an eye on that. Um, noticing that 34 or 39% of the stocks holding above their 40-day uh, moving average. It's a pretty tough case to build, you know, big bullish um, sense for the market. But also, it's an oversold condition, which suggests we might catch a bit of a relief rally. Let's take a look at our T2107. Now, T2107 also pulled back, but here's the good news. Um, we didn't really crack this down or break it down so much that there's a problem here. T2107, the percentage of stocks holding above their 200 day moving average, held up pretty darn well um, overall. So I'm still going to say the bulls have an opportunity here to bounce um, um, some of these stocks a little bit higher. So watch some price resistance levels up in here in that chart. Um, again, 38% of the stocks, it's pretty tough to make a real big bullish case here, but you got to you got to admit they held on here pretty well and they could still drop a little bit more if you watch right in here if we were to pull back into this downtrend area here um, of the chart well we could still bounce off of that and move back higher so a little bit better here on that side of the equation if we take a look at our uh, t2101 well, T2101 has been really confused here lately with low volume and then high volume and whipsaws and lots of emotion. I'm not sure we're getting great information here. So um, I'm going to kind of discount this a little bit and say it's just going to be confused. And with the likelihood of volume dropping uh, later on this week, um, I think T2122 or T2101 probably isn't going to help us with momentum. If we take a look at our um, economic calendar for today, well, our economic calendar, we have a pretty light one to begin our week. You'll notice in here we've got the housing market index. Now, of course, that can be market moving. We notice know that our housing numbers haven't been all that great, but it's not such a big market moving number that we couldn't have the bulls kind of ignore that and give us a little bit of relief to the upside. So watch that carefully. If it if it comes in very ugly, obviously that's something that the bears could grab a hold on of and push us on down. But um, usually it's not seen as a major market moving number. Now, keep in mind, we've got a couple of bond auctions. We're seeing those treasury yields just kind of edge up just a little tiny bit here this morning. No particular worries there just um, we still have that massive inversion on our bonds which suggests um, substantial recession is likely around the corner here so we'll want to be uh, watching for those signals um, because that inversion has just gone on too long and um, it's likely going to create some bad effects here in the market eventually. Let's take a look um, on Tuesday. We've got housing starts and permits. Obviously, that's a much more important report to move the market. Keep an eye on that one. We're going to come into consumer confidence, existing home sales, petroleum status on Wednesday. Here's where I said later in the week we could get some volatility and maybe a little bump in volume because I expect by about Wednesday volumes to really start to diminish and then we might get a little kick back up here when not too many people are going to be around to watch. Uh, we're going to see GDP and jobless claims coming in and then we've got durable goods, 
personal incomes and outlays. This is that the Fed's favorite number, if you remember. Um, and then new home sales and consumer sentiment. So toward the end of the week, we have some of those uh, market movers, which could be really, really interesting considering um, volumes are likely going to be uh, very light. So um, let's take a look at some stocks that um, could be setting up um, moving forward. Well, first off, we need to be taking a look at those earnings for today. I uh, apologize on that. Let's take a look. We, we have a few earnings to be paying attention to, but nothing that's going to be really market moving necessarily. Um, we have um, all of the earnings reports will be um, except one. We had an earnings report here this morning, um, EBF. Um, before the bell, but everything else is after the bell. Um, ARKR, the, most of these are smaller stocks. Um, HEI will be reporting after the bell today, probably the most notable. Um, ISPO is one no one's really gonna be caring much about, and SCS, it, whoops, SCS is one that nobody's really going to be caring much about unless you happen to own it. So um, not exactly uh, anything that we can find a whole lot of inspiration on on that earnings calendar. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, a couple announcements. First off, um, right way options will be open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the public. You'll be able to come into the right way options room, no cost, no nothing. You'll see what we're going to do. And today I'm going to be doing a class on price action. Um, if you can't make it the whole day, I certainly get it. The, um, uh, the class will be about a two hour period of time, question and answer and class on price action. And we're going to start that at 11 uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time to 1 p.m. Eastern time today so if you have a chance and want to stop by hop over there to the right way options um, website excuse me the hit and run candlesticks website and then click in to the right way options um, um, trading room page and you'll have full access here um, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And the reason I'm doing that is just to kind of celebrate Christmas and um, just understanding that there may not be a whole lot of trading going on with volumes dropping off. So let's use it for a learning period of time in the market. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. As a matter of fact, you need to do your own due diligence, be watching these very, very closely. And keep in mind, with volumes likely beginning to drop in the market, it could be very, very dangerous to trade here um, um, over the next couple of weeks here in the market with lots of volatility, lots of head fakes, lots of whipsaws um, that could um, occur. Her. Let's take a look at a few things in here. Uh, first off, I, I want to point out the dollar. UUP has been really interesting here lately, falling hard and boy, big volatility here in the pre-market. But you can see some gap down happening here in the US dollar. Now, when that occurs, we typically see stocks like gold moving up. And as I've been mentioning here to keep an eye on gold, gold is really starting to show um, a lot more strength than we have seen in a long time. So keep an eye on this. Now, we do have quite a little bit of congestion and price resistance here on GLD, but watch that closely. If we were to spike up through that area, there may be some opportunities here in gold. And one of the things that kind of tends to happen when the dollar weakens, we see gold and silver and other commodity prices move up pretty sharply. So keep an eye on that. Now, silver would be another that I want to point out here. As you can see, silver has been moving. Now it's been pretty erratic in its price move, but we did get that little bit of resting pullback in here. I want you to notice that in this silver chart, we pop through this resistance area here 
popped up through there and so far we have held that area as support now i can't rule out the possibility it may not it may have to rest here a little bit longer but watch that closely if that, that happens to hold then we may actually attack this long-term downtrend and break silver to the upside so watch that close now if we take a look at other places in the chart let's take a look at energy um, energy has certainly suffered a lot here recently breaking down with what what is demand destruction in the market demand destruction is when the market is really starting to worry about um, recession and actually a a um, a recession or a dis disinflationary market we've got inflation coming down but we've got the fed still pressing the accelerator to slow the economy so watching that closely um, that deflationary cycle looks like it could be affecting um, these um, energy stocks so with the dollar falling that's going to fight this move if the dollar falls enough we might see oil recover but if that dollar holds in there on some of these support levels, then we'll watch and probably continue to see energy fall here for a period of time. Now we're running into some price support, so we may have to hold or pause here, but I keep an eye on some of those energy companies. Now when we start seeing insecurity in the market like this, um, a lot of times we will see our financials also suffer. And if you take a look at XLF here, um, we've got a situation here where our financials are showing a lot of concern, a lot of weakness. Breaking through support here this week or this last week um, is one of those first signs of major trouble. We had a lower high created here in the chart and we've now created a lower low. So what I want to see here in uh, the financials is I want to see some kind of a rally back and then I'm probably going to be looking short on those financials. Um, watch that close. Now other places that we've seen some pretty ugly situations here, um, we have seen some of the big tech um, really pulling back here last week, uh, failing along its downtrend. Now the good news here in Apple is we have a, a price support level that should give us some uh, levity and a little bit of a bounce. But if we look into this chart, we've got some resistance levels as we, if we rally back up, that we could find that next short place in the chart. And I just kind of expect next quarter is going to be a little bit rough for um, the these um, companies as they begin to report with the consumers pulling back so hard. So watch that close. Apple could set up short with a rally back to the upside. If we take a look at AMD, now I hold just a little what I call a starter position a, um, uh, in AMD and it's obviously down and will continue to be down here I think for a while. We've broken support um, in that chart, created a lower high, a lower low, so rally back. Um, again, that sets up an opportunity for more downside um, in that chart. Um, if we take a look at NVIDIA, this is one that has relatively held up so far. If you'll notice in here um, on NVIDIA, we've got a nice little trend in here, and so far we've kind of held in here. So NVIDIA might be one that we watch for an upside bounce to the upside. Let's take a look at some defensive sector places. Um, when the market gets a little bit uncertain, you might want to look to some of the more defensive dividend paying type areas of the chart. Now certainly this got hit just like everything else did in the market last week. But if you'll notice we we've got some support levels in here to be watching. If XLU or if these utility stocks can hold on to support here in the chart and remember these are good strong dividend payers then we'd look for that opportunity for this to just turn right around and push back higher so watch that close 
other places that will be kind of interesting to pay attention to is some of our food related defensive sector type plays. Now I've been talking about coke here for a while and I've been mentioning this resistance to be a little bit careful in. You can see this pullback in here broke that upside trend but we've got a little bit of price support in here as well and we tried to rally back just a little bit on Friday. If we can hold this area in here then maybe we can get that upside move starting to move uh, back to the, back there and retesting these resistance levels. Other places that you could look, we saw stocks like Altria holding in there pretty solidly. Good little hold here, nice little resting pattern in the chart. Look for that opportunity for that to hold and move on up. And there's quite a few of those kind of stocks out there trying to hang in. Take a look at KHC. KHC actually rallied on Friday, holding on to that price support level. Uh, looking pretty decently here and trying to push on up. So look for some of those defensive sector areas of the market to maybe show us that bullishness with this craziness that we've got going in the market right now. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. And hopefully, if you have the time, we'll see you over in the Right Way Options Room. And remember, the main class will begin uh, between 11 a.m. Eastern and go through 1 p.m. Eastern today. If you're available for that, I'd love to see you. Um, also, we, I'm there um, at the market open, and we do a market open um, as well and I'm usually in there for about an hour uh, uh, first thing um, after the market opens so hopefully we can see you in the right way options room and you're welcome to be there all day long um, asking questions and I'll do my very best to try and help you out everyone take care have an awesome awesome day we'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning wish you all the best